Hey guys, welcome back. Happy Saturday. You're at the well. Congratulations. Uh, I'm glad that I'm like not too close to the camera today. I feel a little bit like uh, Tula from my big fat Greek wedding, you know, when she wakes up like on her wedding day, she's like a huge zit on her face. You did. That's an overshare. You didn't need to know that. That's not what you're here for. I'm so sorry. Forgive me. Um, you're here to talk about Jesus. Let's do that. Uh, so tonight, I actually wanted to go um, back to um, the scripture that we looked at last Saturday. Um, I think there's more there. I think there's more there to talk about, more to see for us. Um, so if you missed that, cool, this is all brand new to you. If you were here last week, still cool, still good. Uh, we're in Matthew 14. Um, quite a few things happen in the chapter of Matthew 14. And, you know, last week we talked about... We talked about Peter um, and how eager Peter is to, to just like jump in and do what Jesus is doing and jump in and do what Jesus has for him. Um, we talked about the fact that like, you know, it's it's never just the storm that's going on. If we look at chapter 14, there's a lot of things happening before uh, the storm hits and the disciples are, you know, on the boat and they're freaking out and they see Jesus and he comes and he's walking on the water. Um, and Jesus and uh, Peter is just like, hey, if that's really you, Lord, like, call me. I'm going to come out and we'll walk on the water with you. And Jesus says, yeah, sure, come. Let's do this. And so Peter does. He gets out of the boat and he's walking on the water. And I'm I'm sure that was just incredible, like in, indescribable. No, don't sing Aladdin. And, um, and what happens? He takes his eyes off of Jesus and he sees the waves and he hears the wind and he feels it and he's just overcome and he starts to sink. And immediately Jesus reaches out and pulls him back up and he's like, oh my gosh, why, why did you doubt me? And the disciples are like, wow, okay, now we know it for sure. Now you're really the, you're really the son of God. Sweet disciples, isn't that just like us sometimes? Um, so we talked about a lot of good things last week, but I, I don't know. I just feel like there's more that God has for us in this. Um, you know, I've been talking to some students this week about all that's been going on across our nation, um, in, around the globe, um, in our own backyard even. And I think the, the feeling that a lot of, a lot of these students have been feeling is, is a bit of hopelessness a lot of confusion, a lot of um, fear. Um, there's a lot of feelings going on right now, and that's okay. Whatever you feel, like you have my permission to feel it. That's definitely valid. You didn't ask for my permission, but I'm giving it to you in case you needed it. Um, and I, you know, I, I'm having these conversations and I'm trying my best to um, not just give my opinion, but to, to lead people back to Jesus, to lead them back to hope, because that's where our hope comes from. He he is hope, um, and it's it's just not it's not feeling um, like I'm doing a great job of it. I I think I'm leaving a lot of conversations too much room to doubt, um, and I'm definitely one to encourage doubt. I think that doubt is good for our faith. I think that questions and doubt don't kill faith, but silence does. So if you are having questions and doubts, I definitely encourage that. I, I definitely encourage you to to wrestle with that, to, to go to wise people that you trust, to go to the Bible, to go to scripture, um, to worship, to go to God himself. Like he's a big guy. He can handle anything you throw at him, even if it's, you know, doesn't line up with what, who he is. Um, but I think sometimes leaving too much room for doubt, it doesn't do anyone the service that I need to be doing. And so I just wanted to, to revisit this. What's happening right now? in the world, what's been happening for several months now. Um, first there was COVID and there was shelter in place and there was social isolation, etc. And now um, all of this, of, of racial tension and police brutality, racism, all these conversations are very much at the forefront of of our daily lives and of our minds. For a lot of, a lot of us, it might be new information. Some of this, this is this is very old information. We're very tired of living like this. You might be even 
frustrated that this is still a conversation. I mean, there there's a, a very large spectrum of responses to this. Um, and I think the, the point has been made, and maybe even I've made it a couple of times, that you know, the enemy loves to isolate us and then lie to us and then convince us of half-truths and lies and begin to, to lead us to live those things out. And liter literally, we have been isolated from one another. And we have been, um, that takes a toll on our, our mental status, our emotional health. It takes a toll on our spiritual health and even, even our physical health. And all of those three are, you know, they're all interwoven. So when our physical health suffers, sometimes our spiritual and our, our mental health suffers and, and vice versa. And um, the, the point has been made, like, this is exactly where the enemy wants us. He wants us isolated so that he can whisper lies to us in our weakened states. And he wants us to lose hope. And he wants to turn us against the God that we have had faith in, who has been faithful to us. Um, this is exactly where he wants us, right? And we can kind of see this reflected in this story of Peter walking on the water where, um, you know, Jesus and the disciples have been just pouring out. They've been ministering to people. They've been healing people. They've been feeding people miraculously. And I mean, even in this this chapter, chapter 14, the news has come to Jesus that John the Baptist, his cousin, has been beheaded. And so as a group, they've just, they've been through the ringer. And um, now they find themselves in the middle of a new storm. And we can see that reflected, right? We've been through the ringer and now we're in the middle of something that feels new to many of us anyway. And um, it would be very easy to say like, well, this is, you know, this is the enemy. This is how he works. This is, you know, he's trying to, to take us out. But what's also reflected in this story of Peter and Jesus walking on the water um, is that Jesus doesn't address any, anything that's going on. He simply invites Peter to come out onto the water and and when Peter stops looking at Jesus, when he stops focusing on him and he looks at the circumstances around him, he still doesn't address it. He just picks him up and he saves him. And he says, why did you doubt me? He didn't say, why did you look at everything that was going wrong? He said, why did you doubt me? And I think the thing that we can, I think if we dig a little deeper into this past even what we did last week, we can see that we want to we want to focus on our circumstances we want to fo focus on everything that social media is bringing to our attention we want to focus on the arguments that our friends or our family members are having we want to focus on our own opinions and what's going on and those are good things um, to address but when we focus on them when we take our eyes and we put our eyes on those things that's what we see uh, this week at youth group, I had everyone, you know, look at me in the camera and it was like sort of awkward, but that's my favorite thing to do to people. And I said, when you look at me, and you focus your vision on me, you can still th see things around you. You could still react to something around you because it's in your peripheral vision. But when you focused on me, I'm the main thing you see. I'm where all of your attention is going. And it's the same thing with Jesus. Um, what... What the enemy, I'm sure, would love to do right now is come up to us, our isolated selves, our ourselves who have been through the ringer, and he would love to whisper half-truth to us right now. He'd love to say, uh, these waves are too big. Yeah, they look pretty gnarly. Uh, this wind is so strong, man. Don't you think it's going to knock you off your feet? I don't know if you can do this. You really probably can't do this. You should probably just get back in the boat. You should probably run away from what's happening. And what Jesus does is invites us out onto the water. He invites us out into the waves. And I think that's what he's doing here. Yes, these things are happening. Yes, we need to address them, absolutely. But don't take your focus off of me. I'm calling you up to do something bigger. 
something scarier some, than you would ever imagined, something you probably never thought possible, you can because I'm calling you up into it. And so I guess my encouragement for all of us, myself included, is, you know, where where is my gaze right now? Where are my eyes focused? Where is my faith focused? What am I paying attention to? Um, and am I, am I listening to the half truths that the enemy wants me to? He's very good at half truths. Yes, the waves are big, but they're not too big for Jesus. They're not too big for my God to overcome. Um, yes, it sounds ridiculous to think of somebody walking on the water, but it's not too ridiculous for my God. My Jesus does miracles and he still does to this day. And so, um, yeah, I mean, I just, I just encourage you to, to join me in that, that line of questioning, but also that returning of our gaze to direct our eyes to Jesus, um, to see that he is calling us into something that's scary, but not impossible with him. You know what I'm saying? If he's, he's, we're in this storm and it, uh, it is a perfect storm. Let me tell you, uh, it is definitely like a stormy situation. Um, but he's calling us out onto the water. So what does that look like to you? What big and scary thing is he calling you to do? And are you going to do it? Are you going to step out of the boat and take that step of faith toward him with your eyes locked on him? Or are you going to hesitate? and focus on the half truths and look at all the reasons why it wouldn't work or why it shouldn't work or why it's uncomfortable or why it's scary. All the, all the, you know, the logical reasons that we give ourselves to not do the scary work or the uncomfortable work. Is he call? what is he calling you to? And are you going to step out onto that water with him? Using Peter as the example, you know, I said last week that we can, this is a moment for the disciples to look back and see that Jesus has done this before. He is the king of the storms. He can do this again. Am I going to trust him to do something crazy again? Am I going to trust him to do the impossible again? And you can use your life. You can use my life. You can use this story of Peter to know that Jesus, when he calls you out on the water, when he calls you to do impossible things, he's the one who enables you to do them. If you just trust in him, if you just keep your eyes locked on him, if you keep him the main focus, don't, don't worry about the half truths. Don't worry about the real circumstances. Do what he's asking you to do. I mean, I, I hope this, I hope this is making sense. I often start to ramble and I'm like, yeah, I sound so good. And I'm not sure that's always the case, but, um, I don't know. I, I, that's what I feel like God's put on my heart this week. And so I just want to be faithful and bring that to you. Um, yeah. So, um, I would love to hear your thoughts on that. I'd love to, um, hear, gosh, I would love for you to go away and think about this and pray on it and ask God, what, what waves are you calling me to walk on? And I'd love to hear what that is. So you guys go ahead and leave a comment. You guys can share this with somebody. That'd be awesome. Um, yeah, we all need some prayer. So let's, let's do that. Okay. Um, Heavenly Father, Lord, I'm, I'm so thankful for, for Peter, sweet Peter, who was so eager, uh, and so faithful and so willing to do the hard things. He just wanted to be right there with you doing the impossible God. And I pray that we would all have a heart like Peter right now. When, when thing, when things seem too big, when things seem impossible, when they seem scary, God, that you would give us the courage to step out of our safe little boat and do the scary, impossible, hard things, Lord, because we know we can have faith that with you by our side, we can accomplish them. Lord, I pray that you would speak to our hearts right now in a way that we've never experienced. May we be open to your words. May we, may we recognize the sound of your voice. May we be able to say to the enemy, nope, not today. I am not listening to your junk. <laughs> I don't have time for that. I'm, 
I'm not listening. I'm not falling for the half truths, Lord. God, may we recognize truth when we see it. May we hear your voice when you speak to us. I, God, I raise us up to be a generation that desperately longs to hear from you and to respond to you in faith. God, you are so good and we need you. Every day we need you, Father. We thank you for this time, Lord. I pray for soft hearts. I pray for soft hearts and open ears, Lord. Thank you and we praise you. Amen. Well, that's what I have for you tonight. Um, I hope it blesses you. I hope you can be brave because I know that you can do hard things. I know you can walk on water when Jesus calls you to. So um, know that I'm praying for you this week. Know that we all love you here and hopefully we will see you next Saturday, okay? Have a great week. Bye.